Well, hiya, BookTube. Bill Rutenberg here with the Rutenberg Library. Uh, I wanted to bring you another tag. I've been on a, a mission here in the last couple days that uh, I want to go through all my tags that I have uh, saved on my Google Doc and actually get them filmed and, you know, get them out there. So that's what my, my goal is. Um, I don't know how many of them I'll get done, but that is my goal. So today's tag will be the end of days tag. And this was, I was tagged by Jim at Jim's Books re Reading and Stuff. And then um, in the original was done by Bob, <clears throat> excuse me, Bob the Booker. And um, I appreciate getting tagged by you, Jim. Thank you. Sorry it took me so long to do it. I've had my answers all, you know, filled out on my paper for quite a while, but I just hadn't got it filmed. So uh, anyway, wanted to go ahead and get this done. So here we go. Again, this is the end of days tag created by Bob the Booker. So here's the prompts. Uh, the first one is prophecy. A book that contains a prophecy or promise, whether it comes to pass or not. Now, typically, I do not read a lot of those type of books. And so my choices were kind of limited. Um, I thought about using the history side of this and, uh, you know, some of the, uh, we could call them prophecies of the founding fathers and what they were creating with our, with our great nation and the democracy that was putting, that they were putting forth. Uh, I know Ben Franklin said some stuff, you know, his prophecies about the future. I, I say prophecies very loosely there, just his his ideas of, what, you know, we created a democracy and now we've got to, you know, keep it. And what we do will depend on whether it stays around. And I'm very much paraphrasing that. But, um, you know, we had founding fathers that did that. But uh, I know that's not what's meant by this question. So I went into my book, my book my uh, reading list. And uh, a long time ago, I read a Stephen King book called Thinner. And uh, if you've never read that book, it's quite interesting. It's not very big. It's not like your typical monster-sized Stephen King. It's a, it's a thin book, hence the name. No, didn't have anything to do with the name. But anyway, <laughs> it's a shorter story. And uh, it's about a guy who, um, it's not necessarily a prophecy, but he, he has a uh, he runs into an old lady who puts a casts a spell of sorts on him, and he starts losing weight. And no matter what he does, what he eats, he keeps getting thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner, and he just keeps wasting away. And that was the the prophecy or the promise that was the you know the spell that was cast on him or whatever word you want to use. It's been a long time since I've read the book, so I can't even remember what words were used in the book. But it was really good. I I liked the book. Highly recommend it. Uh, the next one is Apocalypse, a book that talks about the end of the world. I really wanted to put the book of Revelations in here, but um, I'm, I'm going to stick to, um, I'm going to go with another Stephen King book, The Stand. Uh, and the Stand is a, it is a monster sized book, uh, but I enjoyed it. I know not everybody did uh, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was really good, and it talks about the 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 end of times and good versus evil and all kinds of uh, stuff in the book. And uh, the book is much better than the movie, by the way. The movie was not very good, as a lot of Stephen King movies are. Next prompt is Winter, a book that talks about the end of the year and or icy and cold conditions. I went with a Dan Brown book. Now, most of you remember Dan Brown for like the Da Vinci Code and, and those books, but I went with a one of his earlier works called Deception Point. And this was, um, it was a story about the government trying to cover up something seek, uh, secret that was buried in the Arctic, uh, up in, the, up in the Arctic ice, and the whole story is about protecting that secret, and and um, it's an action thriller uh, based up in the Arctic, and it was really good. I really, really enjoyed it. It's one of those books that you don't hear a lot about by Dan Brown, um, but highly recommend it. Next prompt is Nighttime, a book that focuses on the night or has some interesting scenes in the dark. Um, you know, lots of books you could go with on this, but I went with the book called Night 
by Ellie Wiesel. And uh, it's not, not that necessarily it takes place in the nighttime, but it takes place in the nighttime of um, the human experience. Talks about the darkness of human condition. Um, and he was a Holocaust survivor who was at Auschwitz. And he talks about his time at Auschwitz in that book. Very, very powerful book. Uh, very small book. It would not take you any time to read it. But if you're going to read about the Holocaust, you might want to read about uh, or read the book Night. Um, so I, I hope you're okay with me taking liberties on this prompt. But I'm going to go with, uh, you know, the darkness or the nighttime of human condition. So um, next question is Later Life, a book that talks about aging or prominently features older characters. I'm going to go with a Nicholas Sparks book called The Notebook. Many of you have seen the movie, and if you remember back to the movie and the book, it it uh, flashes back and forth between the past and the present. Most of it is in the past, but it goes back and forth, and the main two characters are an old couple, and uh, they are living in a nursing home, and the wife is suffering from Alzheimer's, and it is an extremely sad story. And the husband keeps trying to remind her of their, you know, their romance when they were young, when they met. And, and then, of course, most of the movie is about that romance early on in their life. And I can't talk enough about the book and movie. And I know not everybody likes Nicholas Sparks books. They're, they're a little too warm and fuzzy sometimes, but my goodness, I, I gotta be honest. I teared up with that movie. Uh, um, we had, uh, in our, in our family issues with Alzheimer's dementia, whatever you want to call it, you know? And so it really, you know, kind of struck home and that movie always like, it, it always gets to me. Uh, very, very well done. Next question is, until the end of my days, a book that you think will stick with you for life and or that you can imagine rereading later and still getting a lot from it. Um, and I haven't read this book forever, but I know I kept it with the intention of rereading it. And that is Tuesdays with Maury by Mitch Album. Um, and um, if, if you don't know anything about the book, I, I made a note. Like I said, it's been a long time since I read it. So I, I went and just double check to make sure I was remembering things right. Uh, but Maury Schwartz had, uh, had been diagnosed with ALS and Mitch Album goes to visit him and receives life lessons during his visit. It's a short book. It's easy to read and understand. Um, and like I said, it's one that uh, I would love to go back and reread. And those little short life lessons, I know I it was before the era of me tabbing my books, but I've got tabs in that book. It is very good. Um, it's very sad. It'll make you it'll make you get uh, a little bit misty eyed. Uh, recommend it. Recommend reading that. And the last question in this tag is at the end of the day, a cliche, a cliche or trope that annoys you. Um, so I'm going to go with, I'm not always a fan of YA books. Um, you, you know, books that are not necessarily middle grade type YA, but I'm talking more the high school type. Um, and I was trying very hard to read some of these books. My, my oldest daughter was recommending when she was in middle school, high school, she was reading older books when she was in middle school, she was a good reader. And so she was reading some of those more meant for high school books and the, the trope or cliche that annoys me, I wrote down a, a couple of them and that is the first person narration in an adult book and a lot of adult books, I don't mind it. But in the YA section, it seems like all of them are done in first person, and they are not done very well. Um, I get annoyed with them. And then love triangles. So with the first person narration, I was thinking of the Divergent series and the Matched series, um, which, I mean, they were okay. I mean, it was great. Kids got to reading them and fast-paced and all of that, but not necessarily for me. And then the love triangle, I was thinking of, uh, and this is also first person is Hunger Games, which th those were actually okay. But the, the love triangle thing, it just, it gets wore out. People use that trope all the time. And it just, 
like I said, uh, my daughter was reading these and I wanted to read them along with her, you know, so we could have those conversations at the dinner table and I'd know what she was getting into. Um, but yeah, not something I'm necessarily going to pick up on my own. <laughs> but anyway, this has been the end of day's tag. Again, I got tagged by Jim at Jim's books reading and stuff. And the original was done by Bob the Booker. I'll leave the link to their channels down below in the description. Um, thank you for watching BookTube. I hope you had fun with this. Um, go back and try to match up your own books with these questions. I'll leave the questions down in the description as well. So anyway, BookTube, until next time, hope you have a, a wonderful week. Um, we got snowed on a couple days ago, and I was hoping for warmer weather so our pitchers and catchers in baseball could be throwing out at the field. But last night, we were stuck in the gym. But that's okay. It'll soon be warm again. Anyway, until next time, uh, BookTube, stay warm, stay safe, and happy reading.